Talking Sex Live with Chet and Diane is recorded in front of a live audience. This show is for mature audiences only. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talking Sex Live. I am Chet. I'm Diane Hart. And we're unlicensed sex therapists. We're here to go ahead and give you guys uh, sex advice, relationship advice. Uh, we're not licensed. Uh, we, we haven't gone to any schooling, but we're just a couple who's had a lot of sex, so we want to share our knowledge with everybody else. As always, we are joined by our good friend and our producer, Wells. How are you doing tonight, Wells? I'm all right. How are you doing, Chet? I'm doing well. Um, right, do you have your AC on there, Chet? Well, just a little bit. Okay, it's, oh, it's, it's hot. Noises, it yeah. is hot, yeah. Right. Yeah, how's... How is quarantine life going for you, my friend? Oh, I went on a date. Really? Socially distance date. We went to Boba, and then uh, I asked her, I felt the vibe, so I asked her if she'd feel comfortable with me kissing her, but she said, through the mask. So, Ooh, that's oh, weird. Just, that's kind of like a fetish, or like a kink, right? You just, uh, that's something we gotta try, right? I guess. It's kind of like a... During the pandemic. So it's like a dental dam for your mouth, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I suppose so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's. Yeah. I never understood how the word dental dam came up for a condom cut up placed over a vagina. What they use at the dentist. Is that what That's they the, use? The, yeah, they, they, they cut like open a condom a and they put it over your mouth? Not an actual No, condom. like when you get a filling, they put a dental dam. Oh, yeah. I guess I've only had one filling before. He's got really I got amazing perfect molars. teeth, so yeah, it yeah. was... Wow. Yeah, yeah so... But um, that that does make sense, the dental dam, but it makes more sense to put it over your mouth and actually have the, uh, the dental dam there, so... But uh, is this the same lady as before there, Wells, or...? No. Um, the... That old one ghosted me, and uh, oh. this one also ghosted me. Oh, wow. So, I guess it's pretty easy to ghost people in a pandemic. You just... Yeah. Well, it's easy to ghost people when you're not in a pandemic. That's right. So. True that. Yeah. Huh. Well, I hope I, I feel like we're going to have a really good show, a really exciting show tonight. Um, how's the, uh, the, 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 the calling board lighting up? Is it lighting up? Is there people calling in on their wells? Looks like um, we have Werner, Warner, Werner, Werner, and he said partner is only aroused if an audiobook is playing, but then Werner gets caught up in the book and gets distracted from the sex. Oh, wow. Boy, oh. Even King, I could see it being yeah. the same thing for me. Wow. But not J.K. Rowling, because she's transphobic. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. That's true. So... All right, we'll go ahead and patch uh, Werner through. Um, hopefully that... Hello, you're talking sex live with Chet and Diane. I'm Chet. I'm Diane. And how can we help you out there, friend? Hello, Chet and Diane. Ooh. And also wow. hello to Wells, who I have also had experiences with ghosts, but oh. it is not why I've called. I'm very... I've listened to you eagerly mm. for years, and I'm grateful to have your experience now to help me. Okay, um, sure, sure thing there. Um, what, uh, so, yeah, what can I help you with? Uh, that's a very sexy voice, by the way. It's super sexy. Oh, mm. thank you. I thank you very deeply for that. I have a sexual partner and my sexual partner is only aroused when an audio book is playing and i would not have issue with that but i find audio books to be a very compelling medium oh yeah mm -hmm. and i find myself completely taken in by the content of, of the audio book and i'm unable to maintain an focus erection. or mm -hmm. an erection that's right mm -hmm. oh wow 
Have uh, you tried uh, listening to somebody with a sensual voice doing yeah. an audiobook? Yeah. Or maybe Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh, yeah. Listening to that. A good erotic novel, mm-hmm. maybe. We did try the, the Fifty Shades series, mm-hmm. but I found the plot to be too interesting. Oh. And I simply wanted to know what Christian Grey would do next mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. with his life and their relationship. And this was ostensibly while I was meant to be giving hate. Oh, oh wow. wow. So you were going down on her and on him? So, on him? Or her? her? I don't know what you Male, mean, female. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. You don't have to tell us, but you know. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, so, when you're going down on him or her and the Fifty Shades of Grey, I, I would have to. It's mainly written more towards women, mm-hmm. and so I, I mean, I can understand it would be a more of a fantasy for a female partner while you're listening to it to have a male go down on you. Um, that's something we haven't. I tried simply yet. am too. I, I'm a sucker for a good story mm-hmm. or even a bad story. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. I, yeah. the, it got especially bad when we had Charles Dickens, Great Expectations. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. I just wanted to know if Pip would be okay yeah. and if he would ever get his true love. Uh, yes, I understand. Uh, and I completely lost my focus uh-huh. and my erection. Yeah, no, that's totally understandable. Um, what, what, I just, we're going to, it sounds like I'm going to go a little off topic, but what is your kink? What gets you off? What is something that um, turns you on? Um, sex with a partner. That's it? Okay. You're easy. Real easy. Uh Uh-huh. And a a very good, well-executed climax. Okay. You're you're more of a technique man. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. Wasn't it? Yeah. (laughs) Within a story also. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's something to build off of. What if you were to role-play the audio book? So... As it played? As it played. Mm -hmm. So if you were doing um, Great Expectations, somebody would dress up as Pip. and that uh, that could be me. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and uh, I have access to ascots. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then your partner uh, dresses Mm -hmm. up as... uh, Estelle. Yes, Estelle, there it is. I uh, read that one back in college and I completely forgot about it. Perhaps Mrs... uh, No, I should remember. It's okay. I don't. It's okay. She gets lit on fire. Oh, oh. if that's your thing, sure. Uh, Wells is chiming in there. What's uh, what's going on, Wells? Isn't that Mrs. Havisham? Oh. Mrs. Havisham. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Miss 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 Havisham. She never married. That's very important to the mm-hmm. plot of the story. Yes. yes. So, if one of you were to, or both of you were to dress up and maybe even have some props. Uh, mm. But instead of, I, I'm pretty sure there's no sex uh, relations in Great Expectations. I mean, with a name Nothing like, explicit. Yes, with a name like Great Expectations, I, I have expectations that there should be some type of sexual activity in it. Yeah. Uh, big letdown when I was in college when I read it. But His any, name is Dickens, after Exactly. All. <laughs> it's like, uh, I mean, so many innuendos coming from mm-hmm. that name and from that uh, title. But anyway, so just take a classic part of that book and listen to it and then twist it a little bit. So if it's something where there's two interactions between two, uh, interaction between two people and then you start to uh, yeah, just get in the mood and start to go at it. And then maybe that will uh, have your from going like this to like that. And mm-hmm. yeah, and then you can go down on your partner, give head uh, to him or her. And uh, yeah. I don't know. Is, is that I, some... I I like this because there's the possibility of the sexual arc being represented with the story arc, mm-hmm. and it's a very big payoff. Yeah. Yes. 
uh, what um, what other books are you into, or what other audio tapes are like? What, what's something that you're listening to right now? We we were doing some of the work of Albert Camus, but it was upsetting. Oh. I've not heard of that. I'm sorry. I mm-hmm. guess I'm a little uh, illiterate uh, or less literate no, than you are. <laughs> It's all, no, it's fine. It's it's existential philosophy. Ha-ha. And, yes, uh, it, that's a little tough with that one. Um, I got very deeply in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole, uh, um, you know, brain in a vat theory or different theories that you're just gonna blow your mind. That definitely. Oop would not actually uh, turn anybody on because um, you're thinking about that. But I don't know. What what are some more fiction stories that you're into? Well, Wells did mention Stephen King, and I will tell you that the experience of having coitus to Pet Cemetery Ooh. Oh. is yeah. one I will never forget. Mm. Oh, well, I mean, that is something. So go ahead, Wells. Is that the novel or the movie? The novel, there are two movies, Mm -hmm. but perhaps mm, the novel and both movies could create a sort of sound bath. Yeah, or you could do both. Um, uh, Yeah, you could dress up as a character and then hopefully you don't kill each other, but yeah, blood. Reanimated dead child is etched into my consciousness mm. permanently okay um that sounds scarring but yeah. uh well maybe something uh, a little a little less in a tale of two cities uh the back to the dicks mm. back to the future well what no you yeah. you said dickens i well, i said dickens what diane lord of the rings lord of the rings yep uh... Oh, oh, we struck a vein there. Oh, no. Because I had not a J.R.R. Tolkien fan. Um, no, the possibilities uh, in such an epic saga um, are almost infinite. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, I mean, Arwen, very beautiful. Uh, yeah. Dress her uh, up. Uh, yes. You could be Legolas. Um, I, I finally could. Yeah, you could be Legolas in our way. Legolas. Le- Legolas. Legolas. I know Legolas. Legolas. Legolas or Legolas. Lust. Legolas. Yeah, there you go. That's, That's what, what you're going for. It's the uh, porn name. It, yeah. it is a pun. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Um, now you get it. Well, I I I hope we helped you out there. Uh, please. Um, you did very deeply, yeah. Chet, Diane, and Wells. I wish you good dreams and mm. moist awakenings oh, yes oh. all every every morning uh well i uh, i would he- heavily suggest going out and getting some good props for this and then um exploding the and then letting your partner know and having a good night so uh stay six positive my friend and have a good evening also thank you yes yes oh god Wells, uh, that I, I I wanted to ask what that accent was, but mm-hmm. I I don't know. I didn't want to be rude, but at the same time, as like it sounded German, Almost. but maybe it could be more like Transylvanian or yeah, Czech. Uh, what what do you think there, are? Wells? To me, it was a person who grew up in Great Britain but had German parents. There you oh, go. Yeah. That makes Ooh. sense. <laughs> Which yeah. doesn't usually happen because usually English people hate Germans because of the whole, you know, World War II thing. But, um, yeah, yeah, I can see it happening. Mm-hmm. I can see it happening. Um, yeah. yeah. Great expectations when I read that book. I was just like, why doesn't he have a job? Ah, uh, no, yeah. That was a for me. What, what, did you ever, uh, was there any point in that where you were aroused, though? Um, maybe some of the parts where, uh, some of the sexual tension parts with Estella. Yeah. No, but I was 15 at the time that I read it, so I just had, you know, 
interaction all the time. There you go. Oh, yeah. Everything yeah. turned you on. Yep. Mm-hmm. I totally understand. I watched Price is Right and jerked off to Bob Barker's beauties mm-hmm. uh, on a regular well, basis. Yeah. I thought you were going to say to Bob, Bob Barker, but... <laughs> no. no. Uh. Yeah. She <laughs> was very long microphone. I was like, no, oh, yeah, no. look at that long microphone. Um, strange yeah, no, it, and it's... There's nothing wrong with that, everyone. Um, yeah, that, that was definitely interesting. I've mm-hmm. never thought about having sex while an audiobook was on. Yeah. I, there's got to be a fetish name for that, like uh, audio literal philia or something like that. Something, I, something, something that around is. that line. Um, but, all right, well, so, uh, is, do we have another caller coming in anytime soon? Or? Yeah, so we have Bambi, mm-hmm. and she has a boyfriend that is having problems committing. Oh, all right. Okay. Sounds good. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, hello. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Hello. 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 Uh, you're talking oh, sex live with Chet and Diane. I'm Chet. I'm Diane. And what can I'm we help sorry. you? Sorry, uh, I'm not good with technology. And oh, that's all right. Sorry. Like electronics and stuff. Um. So yeah. <sighs> what do I start? That's all right. Yeah. Just take your time. Mm-hmm. You got all the time just, in the world. We're in quarantine, right? Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, it's just, mm-hmm. ugh, it's just so hard. It, so I have a really great boyfriend. Like mm-hmm. I love him. He loves me. Like we, he buys me everything. Like my apartment, my brand new convertible. Everything oh. is just yeah. He he's, <laughs> wow. he's such a great provider, and like I, I love him, mm-hmm. and I want a future or whatever with him but like it's just he's always ditching me last minute because like his wife has surgery or uh, did you say his wife had surgery uh, what did did you say his wife had surgery yeah like she had surgery on her foot or whatever like she she fell i don't know something um and like his kids they have a soccer game or Mm. something and then like they're having like Christmas dinner or whatever, yeah. and should be with family or whatever. But mm-hmm. like, I had yeah. planned a getaway to Bora Bora that oh. obviously he was going to pay for. Mm-hmm. And he last minute just ditched me and said that his in laws were coming in town and they had to have like family dinner or something. Like, what about me? Exactly. Like, I had to time by myself on Christmas. What the hell? I, I just don't know what to do. Like, yeah. I, I, I love him or whatever, and, like, it's just, I I just can't be ditched last minute all the time. Like, it's mm-hmm. embarrassing. Okay. Um, we're we're going to take this down. We're going to break it down beat by beat with yeah. this one. Um, so, the first question you got to ask yourself is, if he is willing to cheat on his wife with you, if you're in a situation where it's just you and him what makes you think that he won't cheat on you does that make mm-hmm. sense mm. well i mean i look a lot better than his wife his wife is like yeah <laughs> like yeah. 200 pounds Two like, kids, oh. three kids. <laughs> yeah well yeah. i mean well you, you gotta ask yourself does he really love you is he happy i mean breaking up a marriage that's that's a lot on your consciousness it's unless it's a bad one I mean. yeah if it's a bad marriage and he's not happy and mm-hmm. the kids aren't happy and the wife mm-hmm. isn't happy then yeah you know what it might mm-hmm. be better off that he goes with you but i guess you got to figure out if that is the case um if it, they're happily married and the kids are happy then i i mean do, do you feel any remorse or is this just something that you're I'm sure he complains about the wife to her, though. Yeah, that is true. Uh, I mean, he said that he's not happy at home, and okay. he mm-hmm. he's only there because he doesn't want to upset the children or whatever. But, yeah. like, ideally, I would like for them to just be done already and mm-hmm. for her to take their kids wherever. I don't care. And for us to just live happily ever after. Whew, yeah, mm-hmm. that is... I would recommend date other people while you're still seeing him. There you go. And then if somebody better comes along, you go with them. And also, if you date somebody else, 
and he he's not ready to commit to you, he will see that you are dating someone so he will feel jealous about that and that will kind of kickstart the whole the whole situation of him leaving his wife and mm -hmm. being with you so men are very um primal you know they, they feel ownership of of women that they are with even though they may go and stray and try to be with other women. Mm -hmm. I'm not like this, of course. You know mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. Diane. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's it's more of just what's wired into their brain through evolution. Um, so they're very uh, jealous, very, very jealous when they hear of their woman being with another man. So if you were to be like, hey, you know what? If you're not ready to leave your wife, if you truly are unhappy with your relationship and with your family, then uh, I'm going to start seeing other people and uh, just see what he does. You know, if he really is into you, then I feel that he will make a move to try and be with you more and in, in, in things. So I, it sounds terrible, but mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I think that's a great idea. And yeah. I mean, if you want to discuss it over coffee one day, Chet, I think that'd be a good idea. Well, I... To Continue this conversation. Chet and Diane. Diane actually is uh, bisexual. Right, no, I'm sure Diane is busy. Yeah, no, no, no she's I'm actually, bisexual. she's bisexual. She want, she oh. would want to have sex with mm -hmm. you more than I would. We, mm -hmm. we have an agreement oh. that if someone comes on to me, I have to let her have sex with that female first. Mm -hmm. And um, either I get, just get to watch and masturbate in the corner yeah. Or I get to join in. So it's, mm -hmm. um, yeah, if that's okay with you and if that's okay I, yeah. with Diane. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure my boyfriend is probably going to be busy again. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, you can, you can use our names together. I'm going to, I'm seeing uh, a couple um, and we're going to go have sex and just, just go ahead and tell him that and see what he does. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. No problem mm -hmm. well uh well good luck with that um and just uh hopefully things work out for the better for all of for you and your boyfriend and his family so uh, have a good night there uh, bambi thank you thank you <laughs> wow wells that uh I, I i i couldn't with a good conscious tell someone to break up a marriage but i guess there are mm -hmm. circumstances where it it there's some bad marriages there, out there. are bad marriages and and, and oh, believe me there, some people should not get together no. at all it's like just break up already and the kids will be happier there's situations where children just mm -hmm. they would be better off no with a, yeah and mm -hmm. it's it's sad to say you know it's the no. old american mm -hmm. uh well, traditional but, ways that's how I felt about my parents. Yeah, me they, too. But no, yeah. It didn't do any good to create a high-stress, chaotic environment yeah. by two people who didn't really love each other. Exactly. So um, it, it's hard to encourage that with people, but it's... if it's, I'm fine with that. Yeah, if it's the Certainly right... Not through infidelity. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's, it's a little difficult through infidelity. Uh, it's... it's um, I always preach being honest and uh, uh, just being open with your partner, and that is it's that's the complete opposite. Um, if you're unhappy with your spouse, you should just tell them and like and, and say, yeah. "Hey, you know what? We need to just not be in this relationship." Mm -hmm. But um, well, usually women when they're in relationships, they've thought about leaving, and then they eventually leave when they're already checked out. Yeah, that is true. Just from my own experience. Is that, is that what you were mm -hmm. like? Yeah. So. Just saying. Finding out some things about Diane that we haven't heard before. Mm -hmm. so. um, Looks like we have another caller. Okay, what's, uh, what's going on there, Wells? His name is Andrew, and he has a question about priorities. Okay. Well, um... Hello, you're Chuck, ugh, Talking Sex Live with Chet and Diane. My name is Chet. I'm Diane. And Andrew, uh, how can we help you? 
Cool. Well, it's it's so good to to hear both of your voices. Uh, all three of you, in fact. Uh, it's 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 a <laughs> it's it's a it's an odd situation, and I I just wanted to to clarify uh, uh, with you. It, it seems simple in, in my regard, but I I wanted to make sure uh, before I I did anything uh, uh, brash that I had uh, some expert advice. Okay. Uh, uh, how important would you say are a man's uh, how shall we say uh, uh, Ooh, crown jewels. He's, uh, his his uh, uh, wedding tattoo. Yes, yes, balls yes. Balls and uh, penis, or just his balls? The jewels, he said. The, the jewels. The, the, yes, the the danglers, the jewels, the uh, mm. the. Uh, <laughs> I feel I feel naughty saying it, but balls. Uh, testicles. <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. 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 Well, so I we'll mean, go there's a lot of men who have testicular cancer, and mo mainly it's just in one testicle, and it has to be removed. But sometimes it spreads to both and you mm -hmm. have to have both removed and it's not a big deal if you have them both removed what happens is they put in prosthetics mm -hmm. and then you take testosterone pills uh, or basically steroids and um and then you live a normal life but uh you're you sound like you're 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 kind of leaning towards something different there what's uh yeah, what, what, what's your question exactly? what's your what, real what's, question what, let's get to it what's your question simply enough i i i'm a, I, I come from a long line of proper gentlemen we like to mm. keep well groomed uh, <laughs> i uh i i learned from a long line of uh, fathers and fathers fathers and fathers fathers to to use a straight razor for the best possible shave and mm. i like everything neat and clean and I, I i i keep the uh, the old uh, uh, naughty bits are uh, all nice and, uh, and and smooth as a baby's bottom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, perhaps not the yeah. best metaphor. We shouldn't be crossing babies with uh, uh, bits and, and 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 bobbles. But it's all uh, right. You're manscaping. You're you know. Yeah. I always like to say a, a tree looks larger in a meadow than it does in a forest. So. Yes. yes, and I, I think perhaps a, a tree looks larger if not uh, connected to a pair of uh, dangling mangoes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I, feel, I feel like they're perhaps a bit uh, undignified in, in the heat. They they hang and they bounce about and they, they look like they just don't belong. Everything else just flows nicely but they just hang there like two clumps of uh of, of melting clay if Got you it. will are you saying you don't like your your testicles i see you know in the less uncertain term well yes yes i don't i don't mm. like them and the tweedle d and tweedle dumb mm. uh must go oh okay oh, okay now well we listen um we we had a caller a while ago who also wanted to do self-mutilate himself <laughs> oh yes i remember um, him. but uh we have to strongly uh, advice against mm -mm. self mutilation. Yeah. Um, that seems odd because earlier you were, you were making it clear that they it wasn't such a big deal. Uh, you you were very encouraging of the fact uh, that losing one's testicles is not really uh, that big of a problem. It was more about Due if you had are... testicular cancer, mm -hmm. they have to remove them. I, I agree. I think so, testicles you know, look the, disgusting. The empty that you were you were passing about for the sake of someone who had uh, been injured, but in mm -hmm. fact, you do not believe your own words. So say that again. So it, it's an empty platitude that you use to make someone feel better about themselves, when in fact you you don't uh, subscribe to your own beliefs. Well, I mean. <laughs> I'm just confused about that, but hold on. I, I was bringing up uh, removing testicles for testicular mm -hmm. cancer. I mean, if you don't, with cancer, you have to remove the infected uh, cells or else mm -hmm. it's going to spread. So you need to remove the testicles or else it can get in your lymphatic system. And once it gets in your lymphatic system, it can spread to other vital organs and you die. That's how cancer works. So mm -hmm. uh, you remove can uh, the cancerous testicles and and that's just how that works but you're not going to be able to go to a doctor and say i just want my balls removed for the sake of having my balls removed um but could, could we not say that they are aesthetically ca cancerous you know they they you say they you know as the cancer spreads throughout the lymphatic system well okay. this cancer has, has spread through my psyche and is is ruining my self-image all right yeah, I mean, well, so castration back mm -hmm. in medieval times was, that was the whole everything. Is that right, Wells? That was like penis and testicles 
Was there ever a thing where it was just the testicles? Was it, or is that, that was medieval, no, that was English law for buggery. It was terrible. Up until, like, the 60s, they used to, like, did they remove the balls or they remove the penis and the balls? This is, this is, I'm not just making this up. Uh, Wells, can you confirm that, or? I mean, the castrati, the... The eunuch singers, they would just take the testicles. Yeah. I know. What are you referencing? Oh, um, up until like the 60s uh, or the 50s, they, the English, if, if you were gay, they would, they, they either, I think they just removed the testicles or they would castrate you. And so I don't know if there's a way to remove just the testicles. Um I, uh, Andrew, uh, I'm sorry, um, but we're open to whatever you feel is inside you should match your body. And if, if you truly feel that you don't need testicles and you just want a penis, then I feel that there's nobody to tell you to stop that. So having said that going to a doctor and saying i just want to remove my testicles i don't know if you can do it i don't know well, I, i'm not sure I, actually i'm not sure i'd need the doctor per se again i, I have the straight razor Ooh, i'm well yeah, no, definitely no, no, do no, no, not no. um so that can create a lot of infection um it, i yeah. have i have alcohol you know like i i i i, mm. I have astringent i have a uh, witch hazel no. I'm sure that combination there would, would do wonders. No. Uh, well, um, I would highly suggest if you really feel that you don't need your testicles, you should go to a doctor and you should talk about this. Especially go to a psychologist first. Psychologist as well. And a therapist and just... And talk this all out. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, there are very open doctors out there, especially with um, transgender uh, people who don't want certain aspects of their body there there are females out there that feel that they're male and they don't want to go through the whole uh the transformation but they don't want their breasts and so they remove their breasts and that's that's normal. well that's absurd but that's breasts that's, are wonderful well for for you and i yes but for some people mm -hmm. who feel they're male and they don't want breasts on them then that is understandable and if you also feel like that um, and if you can go ahead and, and, and express your feelings to a doctor, then hopefully uh, you'll, you'll, you'll come to a place where you're happy. Because uh, that's what Diane and I preach is mm -hmm. uh, we just want people to feel comfortable, happy, and safe sexually. Mm -hmm. So, Well, I, I thank you both for your time. I, mm -hmm. will, uh, I will consider seeing a doctor, although I don't mm -hmm. want to be surrounded by yes. all the crazy people who see one but mm -hmm. all right all right okay. well andrew i hope you uh i hope you find your happiness there and and just stay safe and be sex positive my friend thank you thank you all right well, did you do some well, uh, research there wells or i did um i didn't see anything that you were referring to oh. usually it was uh they were sentenced to death or they were in prison oh okay I, yeah. we, we just watched this documentary. Well, it wasn't a documentary. It was that... It's on Amazon with the Prime Minister and that thing from the 60s. He was gay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that right. thing. And he was just like, oh, buggery. We can be castrated for that. And mm -hmm. it's like, well, that seems really messed up. But they also would hang people and cut open their guts and they would spill out everyone everywhere. But yeah. Barbaric. Yeah. It is. It was very barbaric uh, up until they passed several different laws in the '60s uh, over there, and I did not realize that. But mm -hmm. um, well, I think we had a good journey tonight. We helped some good uh, well, we people. Had a journey. Yeah, it was the whole gamut of uh, of uh, relationship and sexual uh, uh, situations there. So, but. Although, uh, I I think any doctor would consent to removing someone's testicles if they were not transsexual. Exactly, and I feel that would be a little, a little difficult. It's it's almost like, um, 
we would have to feel, see like a cosmetic uh, surgeon or something for mm -hmm. like because yeah. uh, people remove weird things like like that part of your tongue that like so your tongue's longer i diane and i actually had this conversation about that maybe i should remove that so i could pleasure her better uh but my tongue's already long enough i'm like mm -hmm. eh, one of those mm -hmm. but but i wanted to go up to there so i don't know uh but yeah that that's it's it's kind of like mutilation and it's it's not yeah it's not it's it's kind of frowned upon in the medical community so um right but well hopefully he finds the answer he's looking for but mm -hmm. uh well that was a good show um and we'll go ahead and end it there um we'll say until next time everyone stay sex positive and i hope everyone has a good night Good night.